It started in 1982 with a low-generation copy of a local band's three-song demo for the soldiers in the trenches. Some people got into it after hearing Bonded by Blood by Combat Records for the first time in 1986. Others will assert that August 11, 2001 was the start of what really mattered. Regardless of the year, these events are united by Gary Holt's perseverance. It is impossible to talk about Exodus's impact and force without also discussing the history of metal music. The band's most laudable characteristic is that lead guitarist, songwriter, General-in-Chief Gary Holt has never used the phrase, surrender, despite being widely credited as having started the Bay Area thrash scene in the early 1980s. The band has persevered despite defection. Original guitarist Kirk Hammett left the group in 1983 to join Metallica. Original vocalist Paul Bailoff passed away in early 2002. Longtime second vocalist Steve Souza left the group in 2004 on the eve of a South American tour. Original drummer Tom Hunting was rendered helpless by panic attacks in May 2005 and guitarist Rick Hunolt's resignation. Due to the tape trading environment, Exodus quickly became well-known in the global underground scene at the start of their career. The band's goal of bringing Bay Area thrash to a global audience was made possible by their explosive guitar riffs, heart-pounding drumming, and gory live performances. The band's lineup in 1983 included bassist Rob McKillop and guitarist Rick Hunolt, and it had influenced bands like Metallica, Testament, Death Angel, and Violence. A massive tour with Slayer and Venom helped make Exodus a household name when their debut, the timeless, essential, indisputable thrash classic Bonded by Blood, was released in 1985 through Torrid Records, and later reissued in 1986 on Combat Records. Due to interpersonal and musical differences, lead vocalist Paul Bailoff left the band just before Pleasures of the Flesh, their 1987 album for Combat Records, was recorded. Steve, Zetro, Souza, formerly of Legacy, took over as the band's lead singer. Combat's fabulous disaster in 1989, which was the result of that line inventiveness, UPS earned the group a major label deal with Capitol Records. Exodus steadily toured in support of 1990's Impact is imminent in 1992's Force of Habit with Pantera, Suicidal Tendencies, Anthrax, Mo Reed, Black Sabbath, Metallica, and Megadeth. However, the grunge movement's commercial infiltration of the music industry changed the musical landscape and signaled the end of the careers of most of the scene's metal bands, including Exodus. In 1997, the band briefly reunited with founding singer Bailoff for long enough for the group to hire bassist Jack Gibson, embark on a North American and European tour, and record another lesson in violence, their second live album. On August 11, 2001, the future of Exodus came together in an unanticipated way. Along with the Sousa-led Legacy, Heathen, Forbidden Evil, Anthrax, Death Angel, and Vio Lentz, Holt, Hunting, Bailoff, Hunolt, and Gibson were invited to take part in the grandly billed thrash of the Titans Benefit concert for Testament singer Chuck Billy, who was battling cancer and receiving chemotherapy. Thrash of the Titans, which was initially intended by many of the hired players as a one-off performance, was the catalyst for the comeback of numerous Bay Area thrash bands who had practically disappeared from the scene. After the event, Exodus resumed producing music, but the attempt to reform was put on hold when Bailoff unexpectedly passed away from a stroke on February 2, 2002. After starting to look for a replacement, Souza ended up picking up the microphone once more to assist in the recording of Exodus, brutal comeback album, Tempo of the Damned, in 2004. The universal euphoria created by Tempo of the Damned, which was produced, engineered, mixed, and mastered by Andy Sneap who ever worked with, Megadeth, Arch Enemy, and Creator, with artwork by Joeyda Kaminska, suggested an energizing new start for Exodus. However, the departure of Souza, Hunolt, and Hunting within a year stripped the band of three classic members, and the future looked bleak but Holt managed to find two seasoned musicians who had the same Bay Area vigor that surged through the veins of Exodus in less time than most people have ever seen a band recover from member loss-induced dormancy. Holt installed one of the most accomplished metal drummers in the world Paul Bostaff, formerly of Slayer. Forbidden. And testament on the drum throne. Holt chose godly heathen guitarist Lee Altus, who admittedly had to wait 20 years for the band to extend an invitation, to continue where Hunolt had left off. A risky decision was made to replace Souza by hiring guitar tech-turned-lead vocalist Rob Dukes, 
who had the hatred and virulent venom necessary to credibly spout Holt's deadly lyrics. The internal reorganization dramatically increased Exodus' ability level, making this lineup the ideal one for throngs of thrash metal fans around the globe. The seventh studio album by Exodus, Shovel-Headed Kill Machine, was released in 2005. It was produced by Gary Holt, mixed and mastered by Andy Sneap, and it was armed with the necessary maniacal passion, pain, and conviction to battle adversity. It upheld the musical veracity of thrash metal's very foundation and plowed straight ahead like a lead-filled battering ram. Exodus can hold their heads high as the reigning kings when it comes to composing and playing the thrash metal they helped invent more than two decades ago, their musical direction has not changed in the past two years. Producer Andy Sneap was brought to the United States from England in the summer of 2007 to rejoin Exodus at Sharkbite Studios in Oakland, California, and record what will undoubtedly be a career and genre-defining album. The Atrocity Exhibition Exhibit A is the master of puppets for the modern era's thrash scene, a visceral auditory realization of collective consciousness that will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand on end with intimate recognition of its omnipotence. It has artwork by Seth Soren Anton who ever worked with, Vader, Decapitated, and Belphegor, and raises the bar for all other thrash metal albums to be released this upcoming year. There is only one word that can adequately describe the album's entire number of heart-pounding, eyebrow-raising, raise your fist in the air, rip-tied basslines, and double bass flurries, fugged about it.